Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Berry, your yoga for scoliosis community. Welcome to Back Chat, which is my um, weekly live stream. I do this every Wednesday afternoon. And it's a great way I find to have some great conversations um, with people um, who have scoliosis, people who work with other people that have scoliosis to um, find out a little bit more about certain topics. So sometimes it's just me talking. Um, my name is Christine Jureggi Berry, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm a, I'm a yoga teacher. I specialize in yoga for scoliosis. And um, sometimes I talk with other people as well. So today is one of those times and I've got a guest today. Her name is Mary Powell. Some of you might know her from um, Instagram already. She is an Ashtanga yogi. So her, her practice is different from mine. Um, she's got a very impressive practice. She's got quite a severe scoliosis as well. She's, she's going to talk about a little bit about this as well. Um, but really our topic today is to... Um, kind of dive a little bit deeper about this um, concept of breath and core. And I'm going to ask her, obviously, what her thoughts are and uh, why she thinks this is related and why it really works together. So if you are here live, make sure to um, get involved. Feel free to ask any questions during the interview. Um, I might not get to them straight away. And I know there's always a little bit of a delay but I will definitely get to them. So let me bring on um, Mary. Hello, Mary. How Hello. are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you good. so much for having this chat with me. So um, some of you might know her already, obviously. And Mary has actually been on my on my YouTube channel before, right? So um, the first time we spoke, we spoke about pregnancy we spoke about kind of the postnatal um, recovery and then last time I believe we spoke on Instagram I think which was more about kind of general general movements and you know things to avoid and kind of this idea of what is safe what is not safe but why don't we start by can you give us a little bit of a um, kind of insight where you at at the moment how old is Ethan <laughs> now, and yes, what's going how, on in your life? How old is. <laughs> Generally, the star of my Instagram account. Yeah, um, <laughs> he's three in two months, and it's it's both amazing and a bit sad because <laughs> he's between the age of two and three. There's so much development, and um, there's been such a change with him over over lockdown, and it's um, it's both amazing and. Um, yeah, he's a proper little boy now. So, um, so yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's how Ethan is. He's doing well. He's super happy um, and very chatty, very, <laughs> very <chatty>. demanding. <laughs> so, yeah. yes, yeah, he's all he good still likes to get involved in your yoga practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, <laughs> I'm not sure "involved" is the right word. I think. Um, she likes to push me over, really, or <laughs> we'll climb on me, and maybe a human uh, jungle gym. But um, it's really, really nice, actually, that um, on the odd occasion here, if there's a mat next to mine, and it, it's not really when I'm practicing yoga, actually, it's it's maybe a bit afterwards that he will he'll get down and do a downward facing dog, and and I kind of make it so that he's like, oh, you're teaching the class now, so it's, there's no pressure. It's like he's leading and so he does like little jumps and stuff like that so he's is there <laughs> it's slowly cultivating yeah. um, and I'm also trying to do a little bit of um like meditation and breathing with him as well which is you know it I mean it's a very different a very different um way of teaching it I guess and very it's it's really interesting because he's so we're doing like 30 seconds with um the yeah. insight timer and I'm trying to initiate the kind of oh look here we're doing a deep breath and yeah you know like seven stuff which maybe he does well maybe two but he's starting to get the gist I think now and he's like mm. yeah let's do the, the bells so so yes yeah, so that's which ties in <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely with um 
what we're, we're talking about to today. Yes, yeah. exactly. So um, if just very briefly, if anyone is here, please let me know that everything is working OK and that you can <laughs> hear us. Um, just so that we know, I'm actually trying out a different system this week. And yes, I'm excited to see how this is how this is working out. So do come and say hello. Let us know where you're from. Um, let us know if you've got any questions, if you're, if you're practicing yoga already. Last week, I had a little bit of a disaster with my, with my live stream. It was just me talking. Um, but just towards the end, my microphone cut off for some reason. <laughs> So technology. I just, you, technology, <laughs> yes, exactly. You can, it, it was just very ab abrupt, basically. So I do apologize um, <laughs> to anyone who, who witnessed this. <laughs> just, I wasn't, you know, just fed up and left, but yeah, my microphone didn't work. Okay, so Karen is saying, yes, it's all working. Okay, thank you so much, Karen. Um, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> technology has not been my friend. Um, over the last week, but I, I feel like we've sorted it out. So I'm quite I'm quite pleased with this. So um, yes, let's get let's get into this um, a little bit more. So what what is so why why this topic of um, breath and core? What what is kind of for you? What is the the connection? Because obviously most of most of people maybe kind of looking at this, they might be like, okay, is she gonna, are we gonna talk about kind of a core workout? Are we going to be talking about core strengthening? What does the breath have to do with it? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. So so this actually ties in quite well with um with pregnancy as well, because mm -hmm. that's I learned so much, and I'm sure you, you probably did too over pregnancies, uh, about the breath and the core. Um and how it kind of leads the way with everything. And actually, um, I view core work very differently now. I'm very breath based. Like the breath is the leader, and it's all very. It's actually it's quite it's harder because it's um, so it's it's breath led essentially. It's doing working with the core with the breath like at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and that's that, like I used to do. I think like, I think I, I had like I used yeah you know, I'm talking in my teenage years which probably didn't help my scoliosis um I used to do like 200 like crunches and bicycle um twists and um oh, hang on Siri is <laughs> getting involved <laughs> oh he's heard you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh let me see if I can sorry let me see if I can I didn't hear it though <laughs> More technical hitches. <laughs> yes, this is just, um, it's a minefield of things that you have to think about for these live streams as well, isn't it? <laughs> I have like notifications and, you know, uh, the phone might ring. <laughs> all these <laughs> sort of things. <laughs> so, yeah, I've got a. You okay? Yeah, sorry. It's um, I don't really know what I'm doing. If I'm honest, no. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to turn it off, and I don't know why it suddenly started. On, it's okay. It's, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's interfering or anything. It might just okay. be distracting. Distracting <laughs> me. Yeah. Kind of with different answers. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's it's very much more intricate. I used to do maybe like two hundred my aim was to do like crunches and mm -hmm. twists and it was all about in the six pack when I was when I was a teenager and stuff and I didn't ever really think about technique or even breathing or or anything like that and so actually this working with the breath and doing core led breath work um very Pilates based um yeah but um and it's very pregnancy based as well obviously I'm not um, I'm not pregnant or anything but from what I learned through that and um it's harder it's way more you have to pay way more attention and it's way more um you know subtle movements um and but it's really foundational in the way that you move and so it's it, hopefully making um well, 
be heading towards a more functional uh, way of doing mm -hmm. other core exercises maybe um and yeah with using the breath so the you know the um we think of the core as kind of just the front plane and superficial muscles mm -hmm. uh, of the abdomen and um actually i don't really <laughs> i don't really concentrate on those anymore because actually the deep core is um yeah, the deep core is um the pelvic floor, the T, the transverse abdominis, I'll try not to abbreviate <laughs> too much, the diaphragm, even the glutes play a part, um, and the serratus, and, and using everything as um, working the body as a team, as, as one, mm -hmm. uh, rather than just kind of one set um, of muscles, as in there. Um, yes. Abdominals. Yeah. Um, and so, um, it's also changed in the fact that I used to. Uh, this is quite quite a a common thing that um, gripping your core in, like mm -hmm. pulling your core in, having like the tensing through your core, and and having you know, again that six pack or you know flat stomach and, and things like that. Whereas actually, it is a lot softer now, and I let myself breathe into my tummy and let my tummy come out. And expand when I inhale, and then gently dropping down. And and there's other vari there's other variants of that as well. Of course, I kind of I do a bit more mm. stuff. But but letting letting myself take a big, nice, deep, big in breath, and all the way down to the pelvic floor because the pelvic floor drops, and the, it works with the diaphragm. So if you're kind of just if you're missing out those muscles, in, like including the psoas, the psoas as we all know, is a very um, temperamental, <laughs> temperamental muscle for many people with scoliosis. Um, yes. I, it's, how, it's, it's the bane of my life. <laughs> um, mm. it's, the, it's the muscle that I feel the tightest in and feel the I have the least control over. And, and breathing also, um, you know, includes the psoas as well because there's parts of that attached into the diaphragm and um, right down past the um, the hip as well. So that whole kind of collective um, is um, how I do my core work now. And I let the inhale expand the pelvic floor and I and um, the diaphragm and let the exhale bring it back up. Um, and then to elaborate on more on that as well, I think like, I never even used to think about the pelvic floor at all. And I think it's almost like there was like no feeling there whatsoever, especially when I was doing core um, movement mm -hmm. um, and, and core working the core and your breath um, is incredibly important. As I found out when I was pregnant, um, because it, not you not breathe it goes hand in hand on which comes first not breathing properly and not using core properly can create dysfunction um yes. within, within things like the lower back causing possible lower back pain as well um and that's you know i didn't realize that um you know and especially this is a an special especially a big point in ashanga where we're but in you know, like in yoga as well but um especially in ashanga that um we're very much encouraged to squeeze the bandas to so the muller banda, which is the pelvic floor and the anus, and, and the whole sling, the whole pelvic floor, essentially the base of the mm -hmm. pelvis, to squeeze that as much as possible. And that's where our power came from and, and things yes. like that. Um, I used to be adamant that I had to like <laughs> grip on there. Um, and and during the whole really... practice as well, right? There's no yeah, like... Yeah, would you know that they... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, someone asked um, the question on, you know, how, you know, when is there a time that we should let the mula banda go? And it, it, it was said, well, you know, when you go to the toilet. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, which I could, which I disagree with um, now. And, yeah. I do, and But I didn't realise, um, you know, I just, um, I understand now that gripping muscles something that's completely locked on doesn't mean that it's strong it just means it's strong in that position mm. and a fully functioning muscle lengthens and it contracts and it it, does, it is able mm. to do that relatively smoothly mm. um and 
uh, with scoliosis especially like, I'm even kind of um, aware that my right side uh, works my right pelvic floor works completely different to my left side it's almost like I've got two sides of my pelvic mm, floor um, yes. in their own unique <laughs> way which makes things of um a tad more um yeah definitely and I've actually I've got I don't know if you if you know Sarah um Parker physio um she's a, a women's physio she's also on Instagram she's a she's a great women's physio and she's going to be there in three weeks' time or something to talk about oh, amazing <laughs> pelvic floor. So, um, yes, you, you know, it's a big, big topic, um, I think. And um, it's 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 great that you're, you know, you made this, I think you made this this connection um, very clear because a lot of a lot of people, as you say, you know, and, and me in, included, obviously, when we think about core, we think about six pack abs and from it being very different from anything to do with breathing. Um, so it's, it's great to kind of even visualize this, the, the core cylinder is kind of what you were, what you were talking about. You've got the diaphragm at the top, you've got the pelvic floor at the bottom and this all kind of moves together. And it's actually that, that change of pressure and the, um, that that movement of the breath, which is which is so important for for this kind of core work, and I feel definitely in my body after having children, <laughs> <laughs> this becomes a lot more relevant. As you say, you know, like before, you don't really think about this very much, and it just kind of happens automatically, right? But then, you know, um, yes, as you get older. <laughs> <laughs> It's and I sometimes realize, yeah, it's not <laughs> in the door. and you sometimes, uh, I sometimes realize when I say, there we are. Hello, sorry. Are you <laughs> I know. I don't know if that was my connection. Might have been. Um, so yes. Yeah, so I was saying that um, sometimes it's this kind of uh, unconscious kind of gripping that that we're doing, especially in in a kind of stress situation, and and when we're not kind of thinking about it too much, and we only realize afterwards that we've just been under constant kind of gripping and tightening. Yeah. Um, which which can cause problems. Would, um, so I was reading the other day that the pelvic floor um, is very much. Um, sorry, Siri is going off again. <laughs> very much linked to, or fear is very much linked to the pelvic floor, um, mm -hmm. and one of the first places that we grip. And then again, so then that um, emote like that's an emotion that ties in with breathing as well, and. Um, you know how react how we react to things um everything's just linked <laughs> it's kind of yes um, now here's a here's a question for you i don't i'm not quite sure what a, a spirometer is to be honest um back in your live session my question is can i use spirometer spirometer maybe uh, yes. is, that one of, is that one of those things where you blow into for for like to test lung capacity right maybe i don't know that's Let's see, it yeah. rings a bell, but I'm not. And then follow up, so doing cat camel pose. Well, let's maybe talk about this. Um, what is what is your thoughts on proper or improper breathing um, during yoga poses? Like, like something, let's talk about, well, I call it cat cow. He was calling it yeah. cat camel, um, you know whatever you want to call it is there a right way is there a wrong way well i think first and foremost we just we just need to be breathing because <laughs> yes and, and paying attention to the breath um i think if we get caught up in this is good this is bad um um you you can kind of over, like that affects kind of how you breathe as well and can mm -hmm. become a little um, a little bit constricting um so first and foremost breathing observing and pay just noticing anything that's going on with the breath are you able to breathe into 
um, all parts of your lungs. Generally, it is, it's going to possibly be a no if you've got scoliosis, especially severe scoliosis. Um, and observe where where your in where your breath is going to, how deep that you how deep you can breathe, um, how it feels. If you can uh, if you can breathe right the way down to your pelvic floor. Can you feel that? Can you not feel like that? Are you holding tension in your jaw? Lots and lots, of, like <laughs> complicating it even more. But there's so many check-ins that you can even start off with 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 breathing. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, just breathing is in everyday life. Generally, we're just breathing to there, um, especially if, you know stressful jobs and. Um, pandemics and, <laughs> and such um so even just checking in with actually taking a full breath and even if that's you know a full breath isn't necessarily going to be the same if you have scoliosis as someone that doesn't but you can still take a variation of a full breath as, as much mm. as you can um so i would start with that and then i personally really um like to link in with the pelvic floor inhale lengthening so i would do the inhale on the um cow or camel or whichever um whatever um animal you want to describe your pose as yes and when, you open. Yeah, when yeah. you open yeah your chest and you lengthen down the center line of the body because then you're lengthening as you inhale as well the pelvic floor and the diaphragm is dropping as well mm -hmm. so that, that kind of I think goes very well with the inhale and then on the exhale as you close your body and you draw your diaphragm in you draw your lower ribs in that coincides quite well with the lift um back up with the pelvic floor and the back up with the diaphragm mm -hmm. um and constant and and concentrate on that motion um sequence whatever like um to, to really slow it down and simplify it um yeah so yeah I mean, you can you can start with either of those first mm. if, you, if you know that you're someone with a with a shorter breath or a shallower breath i would just concentrate on on breathing or someone that you have another variant that people just hold their breath when they do do exercises because we and i do it with new movements um yes it's a normal thing isn't it when you're learning something new or if you've got lots of weakness somewhere you don't know, know the movement you're concentrating on moving so much you don't have space in your brain to to concentrate on the breath um, mm. and so if you if you find that's happening then again the first point of call is to just make sure that you're actually breathing then build it up slowly then you know see if you can get the full in breath and exhale then mm. see if you can coordinate the breath with the movement and then keep observing see where your you know tight spots are or where you might need a little bit more um, strength and support so i think side plank works very well with um promoting a good breath as well because okay that pillar um, it, um i heard a breathing specialist um <laughs> describe the core and, and, and the breath as an amazon box which <laughs> i think we can all relate to um in that like, if you had a side that kind of got wet and soggy then it would start to um collapse and it wouldn't be a, a stable um thing to contain right your... okay i was wondering where you were going with that with the amazon <laughs> box but, <yeah. laughs> um yeah so and you know particularly you got the bottom with, you know for the pelvic floor but also with the sides with the obliques to support to have like to hold space for mm -hmm. that inhale so it can channel the breath down to the pelvic floor and uh, mm -hmm. keep keep everything as center line as possible which is obviously again difficult one of the reasons i believe side plank is so useful because it snaps up that that strength in the side body to help contain the breath and send it down to the pelvic floor rather than send it in, into one side of the room. So yes, the okay. So we'll, we'll be doing that in the next side plank. We'll be <laughs> watching um, the, or noticing the breath and see how we're... Most yeah. of us are just holding on for dear life, right? <laughs> just about managing to... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. It's definitely what I've been kind of. I, I've I haven't done full side plank for. I've, <laughs> I reeled that in for a while because I noticed I was just wasn't really breathing and I was kind of just hanging mm -hmm. out in it. So I've taken 
um, I've started doing so like a little bit more, um, more like investigating, but re feeling um, um, that, that I'm needing it at the moment anyway, um, and taking it right down to the knee and concentrating on kind of that like derotation and strengthening yeah. that way rather than just as you said, hanging on for dear life in the full version. So um, that's been interesting to yeah. observe, but also that um, the visualization was quite um, resonated with me quite a lot. Um, it was good to picture like a, a box front and back um, mm. in how it can help with the breath. Mm. Um, yes. Yes. And making it more kind of, yeah, three-dimensional, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, because it's very, we're very, it almost feels like we're not three-dimensional. I mean, I feel like when I'm, if I really concentrate on my core, I don't feel three-dimensional. I feel like it's, I don't know, like maybe just very three-sided. There's definitely parts of the box that, um, mm. that aren't supporting my breath so well. Mm. So, um, so, yeah, that was a really interesting visualization. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, so for, for anyone who, uh, so I find it a lot with people that have um, thoracic scoliosis especially, or quite a large curve in the in their thoracic spine, that they might com complain about or, or kind of feel like they can't breathe as much as they, they want to, or they, um, they're, they're kind of having troubles in this area do you have any tips for us of um you know how to maybe start increasing i don't know if you you know i'm sometimes a bit careful with that kind of increasing lung capacity i don't know if that's the right uh, well uh, that's my i sometimes feel like bigger is not always better with breathing yeah no i know what you mean. People, maybe, yeah okay, i'm sorry maybe yeah, breathing when people in feel restricted yes mm. yeah Perfect, um, perfect word. Um, any tips for that? So I've got um, quite severe uh, right thoracic um, mm -hmm. scoliosis, obviously and lumbar as well. But um, so interestingly, even just this morning, but over the past couple of days, um, I've, I've re so I, I think I'm sure you follow him as well. The, the stop chasing pain guy on Instagram. Do you know him? Works with uh... lymphatic. Um, Maybe, maybe no no <laughs> <laughs> i thought i saw you like in one of his posts but um okay if not i'll link you to him anyway right okay. um, so he he's talking lots about the lymph um and it's but it, it, I'm, I'm not kind of link, necessarily linking that to scoliosis but he talks a lot about being stuck um around the collarbones and around the sternum and so i've been feeling quite i feel like um I can't like my unfortunately my osteopath um isn't osteopathing anymore I don't know I don't know why it's very sad because <laughs> he's my go-to um and also because of the pandemic of not being able to yeah see him. And maybe that's because why he stopped anyway I feel stuck sometimes particularly with my right side and no amount of you know I do ashtanga to kind of stretch everything through and strengthen but I also do drills and I do even holding a <laughs> tennis ball because I sit on the tennis ball and and roll around and stuff there's some there's some points where I just feel like I just need some help and I just need some like, manipulation I can't do that in the moment because um he's not um, practicing mm -hmm. um and also I'm trying to you know stay safe in the pandemic anyway I'm feeling quite stuck at the moment and especially again um especially in my my right side and my right psoas but actually it seems to be um i'm quite drawn to around the collarbone area and things so um i've got a massage gun and i've been um massaging right through here um and actually i tried down my sternum today and there were lots of tight spots and actually i felt so i did feel so much freer afterwards mm. um and it and it makes sense because even when we um it, we're, you know we're using our neck muscles and our collarbone like the muscles behind the collarbones the collarbones move to accommodate the breath and so to especially with a right um rib hump and kind a of wing shoulder that everything can get very stuck around there and so i was always concentrating on the on the chest and trying to free the chest but actually behind the collarbone is incredibly in, incredibly tender right the way up into the shoulder 
all the way up his neck and I posted something today on the right um on the tongue uh-huh being, yeah um, I saw that yeah right yeah, connective tissue right the way down to your feet, and that's including the psoas. And then that kind of just sparked my um, curiosity, <laughs> essentially. Then my, I realised my tongue was, um, I realised this is quite off topic with breathing, but my, my tongue was tensing up my right side, also my jaw. Then I did, then I, so then I, it just leads me to, to, to different places. And actually, um, I think releasing the muscles surrounding the collarbones and maybe the sternum mm. um, could be um, quite freeing to let the breath come in. Because if you're quite stuck there, muscles aren't going to be moving, they're gripping. Um, so if you can free up there a little bit, it might lead or it, it definitely I think would lead to a little bit of a sensation around there at least and maybe yeah to a little bit more um, and check in with your jaw because that's mm. very connected again with pregnancy you're told not to like like push with a clenched jaw and try and keep everything soft because it creates tension down um, in your uterus and your pelvic floor so same again if you're feeling it's not always just in one site can you release the areas around it and anything connected to it to be able to piece the puzzles together and work the body a bit more as one well. mm. um, yeah it's very interesting isn't yeah. it and you're sometimes well you know it, the question is always where where does it come from what was there first right yeah. is it you know that was the tightness in the jaw there first is that a result of what what's going on in the scoliosis or is it yeah. the other way around? So I had a, um, it was a conversation with Ed uh, Padgett. Um, he's, he's also an, an osteopath and uh, specializes in scoliosis. And he did, he did mention a study um, where they found a link between problems in the jaw and scoliosis, but like scoliosis being the result of the problems in the jaw rather than the other way around. Oh, which I thought was very, which I thought was very interesting. So that you know, often like people that wear braces, not back braces, but yeah, braces for I, their teeth. I actually read that that you um the, there's a correlation with people. I had braces myself, yeah, literally a few years ago. A correlation with um people that wear braces that have scoliosis. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. And actually like, linking that into the, my osteopath said, um, you, you know, the way you, it, it's not conclusive by any means, but the way that we're developed in the, in the womb on what comes first, so we grow from like um, from the head down, is that right? Like with the spine. And he said that there's also kind of like a diaphragm type sling muscle um, within the neck um, as mm -hmm. well. And so that has a lot to do with, um, you know, the setup of the rest of your posture and things like that. And it goes together with the breathing of the uh, diaphragm and the pelvic floor and even the feet. Um, but yes, yeah, yeah, how you developed in the, in the, in the womb that you kind of brain spinal cord, um, and then everything kind of grows from that. So that's, mm. that makes sense. That's it. But I didn't know that there was an actual, um, an actual thing that that might have come first um yeah interesting. yeah in, in, interesting there's so many things we don't know about scoliosis um i think and there's so much more research um to be to be done obviously so it's it's always yeah. um, so exciting cool. so we're, yeah. we're getting a, a virtual hug here from oh. leonie which is <laughs> lovely thank you so much i hope that um everything is still Working out there in the, in the chat, I know we had this little um, interruption, but hopefully that was all okay. Um, any kind of, uh, let's let's get back to kind of the, <laughs> the core. <laughs> um, anything kind of practical maybe that you can, that you can give us that, that we can do, or maybe something that, that you're experiencing to kind of, I know you are incredibly strong already, but is there something that you do specifically to to keep that up, to stay strong? 
Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm, at the moment I'm just doing bits and pieces. <laughs> Everything's sporadic at the moment with Ethan, but the series up again. Um, more than anything, I'm taking it and really taking it down to foundational stuff. And I feel like if I overcomplicate things, um, you know, maybe it's because I do so much like complex stuff in <laughs> in Ashtanga, but I've done I've repeated those movements so many times that I do feel relatively confident in kind of being able to not compensate so much. But mm -hmm. specifically in the strength work that I'm doing and definitely in the core, um, I feel like I'm having I need to take it back down to foundational kind of strength with the working with the pelvic floor and the breath. So things like pelvic tilts. Um, that's a spe like pelvic tilts with the breath, so exhaling, taking the lower back onto the floor and inhaling yeah. back. Um, because that's changed like due to working more intensively with the glutes. Um, and I and actually, I know it's not specific core work, and I and I keep shouting about this to everyone, but the but working with the glutes really does help you to activate your core a bit more equally um mm -hmm. it's it's been hands down one of the most helpful things that's helped me help my awareness because if you don't if you can't stabilize the hips you're not going to be able to stabilize the core mm. you're just not going to be able to if you're if you can't get your hips into some kind of or close to neutral it might not be like fully neutral but if you can work towards getting the hips into a neutral point um or being a little bit more even down you've got a better chance of um equaling up the core a little bit more um and then with and side plank goes very much hand in hand with that so i i would i would target glutes first um a bit okay and and come in with you know doing foundational stuff like pelvic tilts and work and observe what happens to your to your breath um because actually how you breathe will help really help you i don't really like to say like tone the core but and because we're not looking for toned muscles per se but we're looking mm -hmm. for a stronger a stronger core and functional breathing creates a strong core like we weren't you know way back when we weren't you know doing sit-ups and things we were generally in a good physical um condition <laughs> through the natural activities that we were doing crunches and i mean i don't agree with crunch, crunches anyway but being able to engage the core properly um was just the posture that you were keeping and the breathing yes. that you were doing rather than um sculpting a um a six pack or whatever so um so actually to be honest, like i do i do a little bit of core i do i do the side plank um i've started doing plank a bit more on my knees but that's because i've started to grasp how to not do it from my right psoas because every like that's the i'm going to talk about the challenges that might come up with um, yeah working with core with scoliosis and every time especially when i raise my knees up i just use my right psoas like all the time it just likes to grip on there um, mm -hmm. and take control um and it's starting to do it less because of um because of the glutes and um and that, in the hamstrings as well mm -hmm. um but i still favor glute work and side plank over anything right um, so you yeah, you I'm have a um a left it's a left lumbar and right thoracic curvature isn't it yes yeah so you feel yeah. your 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 right side um is is doing most of the the work which My right um, is doing most of the right so yes sorry right so yeah. <laughs> um yeah but and and it's in a bit of an anterior tilt um mm -hmm. and so oh god i felt like and i think my right glute i mean it's so it's such i mean i'm just, everyone will agree with this it's such a complex thing to unravel and I've been thinking oh I need to work my right glute because if I'm in, in, in anterior to pelvic tilt so that's your pelvis tilt, mm. tilting forwards creating a tight psoas my glute must not be like functioning properly but actually I feel like that grips on as well <laughs> um, so and I've actually found literally just in the last few days that I've been um 
I've been gripping my right glute and my right hamstring, but um, literally, I just find scoliosis so like <laughs> complex even to talk about. Yeah. Because when I say yeah. hamstring, it's like anyone, not all of them, it's just one on the inside. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> when this is the thing, if it, you know, if someone, if I said, oh yeah, go and work your glutes or go and, go and work your hamstrings and stuff, it's quite likely that some of the hamstrings are working really hard and then there's like maybe one that isn't. Mm. Um, and so that's why it's so complex because it's not straightforward in that, yes, you just need to do this. It's like, mm. it's kind of all, like you want the body to work as a whole, but it is segmenting parts of your body <laughs> and trying to yes. notice those what's um, going on mm. what's going on and so it's so hard but in mm. general just just all normal glute work on both glutes has been very very helpful mm. um because even if you're locking on with your glutes um it's only strong in that locked on position and actually it encourages it to let it go and go back so um so but in general i think hamstrings like glute strength and hamstring strength um again builds a very very strong foundation for... yes so it's actually working lower than we think to yeah. to kind of to build up the to build up the core mm. definitely your so your mm. psoas is doing a lot of the work and i like, i used to um think oh i just need to stretch it i just need to, I need to stretch it out I need to lengthen it I need to lengthen it whereas actually i don't do they used to get really angry <laughs> the psoas is very um temperamental anyway if you mm -hmm. stretch it kind of spasm back doesn't like um, it no <laughs> yeah, definitely and so I, I felt like it was a bit of a back and forth with that but actually I don't even really touch the psoas anymore um I I kind of do everything around it so it's mm. like on the bottom you've got strength in the glutes and the hamstrings and on the side the left side kind of shifting that center line over and taking it to the to the mm. oblique. Um, yes I've got it I don't know if you know do you know Donna Fari um <laughs> Again, I think I've heard of. Her. Yes, so she's a, um, a yoga teacher from New Zealand, like very much teachers, teachers, teacher, and she's got yes. an amazing, amazing book uh, called uh, "Pathway to a Centered Body" or something like that, which is all mm -hmm. about it's all about the core and kind of it, exactly what what we were talking about today, and her kind of her work with the with the psoas and um, with with that area is is really interesting so there isn't anything as you say kind of stretching um but there is release work so for example one of the things one of the poses that sh she suggests and which i have you know very much integrated as well is it's very much just resting on your back knees bent feet flat on the ground do that for 10 work. minutes before you even do anything else right yeah. just to that and then uh, the other one is uh, lying on a belly with a um a ball a gertie ball so softball <laughs> in the in the hip flexor that's exactly and what i do the knee out slightly out to the side oh i've not tried it with the knee out to the side but i regularly again <laughs> sit oh, on a tennis, tennis ball. ball okay yeah i think it, well i'm i'm actually looking into um like a, yoga tune up those softer balls okay um so they, they've got a bit more of a give which i'm kind yeah. of interested in because um, um possibly having a too hard ball makes it seem yes like muscle yeah so the gertie ball you you would inflate it just a tiny little bit yeah. and then bring it under there so it's it's more like a like a cushioning really and sounds like it's a similar kind of um yes approach. But I also, I, I then, can't, again, come back to the breath and I concentrate on breathing into, into the tennis ball and out. Um, yeah, I feel like that's one of the ones that um, you, you might be more, like, most people are drawn to do because it's kind of like getting in, like you said, not, you know, not specifically stretching, but it needs, it feels like it needs some relief. So I feel mm. like that's quite a... Um, Quite a few people might be drawn towards that maybe um, yes um, yeah one more thing that has really helped and i am um, maybe maybe two more things to to tie in with that again back to the tennis ball and maybe a softer ball is sitting on it 
on your pelvic floor. Right. Okay. So that kind of ties into that kind of area as well. Same kind mm -hmm. of thing, like taking a deep breath, trying to exhale, uh, sorry, inhale to let the diaphragm drop down over the tennis ball or that visualization and then inhale to come back up. Mm. Um, and then the other thing, um, I, and I, again, it's on a post on my Instagram, is the serratus posterior and, and like around the kidney area and promoting a 360 breath. And the more that you can kind of draw the ribs in, the lower ribs in and press into the back serratus posterior or maybe even the, like the lats around the area of the kidneys, just the lower back ribs, especially in things like downward facing dog, mm -hmm. releases um, some of the work from the psoas as well. I found that yes. really, really, really helpful, actually. Yeah. Um, so, again, it and kind of goes back to not doing specific core work particularly, but drawing the ribs in, mm -hmm. working with the breath. So, again, it's not <laughs> not conclusive, do this sit-up kind of thing. It's a, mm. um, you know, awareness and breath and intricate kind of work. But all work that you can kind of do whilst you're sitting – because um, you can press in, you can draw your lower ribs in and expand your, your back ribs and try and breathe into that at any point during the day and mm. drawing yourself back to that. You can sit on a tennis ball if you're, you know, working in an office or teaching from sitting down or or whatever. These are, you know, it's just integrating these tools throughout throughout the day. Yes, than, exactly. Um, and then putting that into your work on the mat, whereas I think. And transferring the work in, on the mat that you can do outside of that as well, but into just making it more integrated and not just stopping it on like mm. in your movement practice and looking where you can aid, <laughs> um, you know, your scoliosis and help it out um, throughout the day as well. Yeah. Because the more you integrate it, the more it is, that's where it, the 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 space is going to come that's where the mm, you know, exactly gonna it's not the one hour of yoga you know one you know yeah. once a week or or yeah. whatever it's it's what you know what you do all the time really that exactly. that makes that makes and, it, and you know it's the same it's just, yeah the same with mental health as well so breathing mm -hmm. is incredibly important with that mental health and, and again it's not just what you know the mental health that you learn on your mat you're then transferring that into everyday life and mm. making that connection with your body and your mind as well uh, making it a life a lifestyle I think we talked about this before making it more of a lifestyle and um, having a toolbox to kind of you know go to um, and use in all these different things that we do um, yeah yes absolutely I'm going to bring up your Instagram here uh, so for anyone who wants to follow mary obviously this is her instagram so make sure you you do check out her instagram there's always lots of good tips on there um a small child <laughs> to throw into that as well good and you've got have you got a a workshop coming up or has that been it's, already no no uh it's on the let me check i think it's on the 31st okay <laughs> checking the dates so it's on the 31st 10, 11 days yeah Yes, next weekend, next Sunday, um, and it's going to be by Zoom. It's going to be recorded as well, so if you can't make it on the day, um, then you can, I can send you a live mm -hmm. recording as well. And that's going to be on scoliosis and mental health and how it impacts um, our mental health, our, our, our you know self confidence, body mm -hmm. confidence, and um, how we can deal with that and maybe change the narrative around that or start to yes. think about changing the narrative around that because that is um you know there's an underlying thing isn't it um and in how it makes us feel um, mm. how, we, how we deal with it in everyday life as well um, yes so. absolutely and i'm sure you'll be talking about breathing as well um in that in that workshop <laughs> yeah definitely yeah breath is life <laughs> breath is life i love so. that good lovely thank you so much um for our chat i'm not quite sure what um what's happening with the with my um with my chat i don't know if it's working properly 
<laughs> but let's well, if anyone has any questions then they can send me via um instagram or yeah. facebook Yes, absolutely. Just uh, just get in touch. And um, yes, next week I've got um, Adeline Chung, who's one of my teachers as well. And she's going to be talking about um, the question which I get all the time. And I'm sure, Mary, you get it all the time as well. Can we cure scoliosis with yoga? The ultimate question, isn't it? <laughs> the ultimate question. <laughs> that everyone wants to know. To what, and how. Um, Yes. How? <laughs> How do we do it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lovely. So thank you so much. Anything else that you want to say? Um, no, I think, I think we covered, we covered loads. <laughs> uh, yes, we have. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't, I feel like it, you know, we're all looking for a, like, oh, but we're generally looking for what core exercise can I do that's going to be most helpful and try like, because we want to simplify things. Mm. Um, and on the one hand there's not one thing that you can do but on the other hand there's just loads that you can do and but it's not simple mm. <laughs> you have to choose your body um but it's there the answers are there if you dig away and stay curious um mm. so yeah sorry no no specific core exercises <laughs> as such but some things that you can draw your attention to that you can yeah take in from a on a on a day-to-day -day basis hopefully like mm. sitting and absolutely and just so. observing you know how one side might feel different from from the yeah. other side and that's becoming your own of... detective isn't it? And, yeah that's all that, that's the initiation of observing mm. and then get mm. curious um, and it leads you down a rabbit hole <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> always <does. laughs> yeah and just when you think you 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 understood it, then you yeah. realize that you haven't actually, yeah. and there's more things to it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> never ending, never ending. But, never but ending. It's important to realize, I think that's it's not just people with scoliosis. I think that's the same for mm -hmm. everyone. Mm. Um, it's not. It's definitely not. It's a bit more. It's more complex with scoliosis, but it's not like we're the only ones that are doing it. I know so many people with like mysterious back pain that have no idea. And it's the you know they don't have scoliosis, but it's the same kind, the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, needing some investigation and some some observation um, for absolutely. Well. Not alone. <laughs> There's no, other people no, that, uh, that, are, that are, um, in the same boat, a similar boat. Similar boat, yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, always you. lovely to talk to you. And yes, thanks for your time. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye. <laughs>